Members of the House and Senate are staging a prayer vigil on the Capitol steps to mark one year since last year's Capitol insurrection. You see a live look right now as it gets going. Now, earlier in the day, lawmakers held a moment of silence on the House floor, and lawmakers have been sharing their memories from that attack one year ago. And joining us now to share his own memories from that day is Congressman Adam Kinzinger. Congressman Kinzinger, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Yeah, you bet. Good to be with you. So what is on your mind on this anniversary? How are you feeling and what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 interesting. It's on the one hand, it feels like this was a really quick year. I mean, for any number of reasons, but January 6th of 21 seemed seemed like yesterday. There's a lot of disappointment, a lot of concern. Um, I would love to have known last year or, or I would love to have thought that we'd be in a better place this year than we are, where there's still have a lot of people denying truth about the election and conspiracies. So it's a real concern for the future of the country. I'm optimistic long term uh, on America, but the short term, I, I really fear there'll be more pain. And, and January 6 was just a symptom of that. One of my memories of that day is Anthony and I were interviewing you live on the air as this was all unfolding. Of course, all of us in shock, outraged. A lot of viewpoints have changed since that day, as you well know. A poll I was looking at this week showed that 52% of Republicans say the riots were protecting democracy. So I want to ask you, like, how do we change that? I know your committee uh, announced this week they may hold some prime time hearings later this year. Is that one way to get people to pay more attention to what happened that day? Look, I think... It, it, it's really important what the January 6th committee is doing to have a full accountability so that when the history books are written in the future, we, we know the truth. And, and the history books will be based on what we know in this report. I don't know if we're going to change people's minds today because I think what's happened, and this is a big concern, people have, have, have invested their own personal identity now in their politics. And they've made friends based solely on their politics. It's actually kind of the most stupid thing to make a friend based on if they believe the same thing about the role of government as you. Um, and that's what I worry about is, is do they really believe that, you know, for instance, Joe Biden lost the election? Or is that just part of showing that you belong to this group? And so I don't know the answer. I learned in Sunday school, always tell the truth. And all I can do is always tell the truth and the rest, it's up to people to decide whether they want to believe it or not. Now, you mentioned that uh, so many people haven't changed their minds about uh, their version of what happened that day. One change I wanted to talk about is uh, security on the Capitol. Capitol Police had testified yesterday that they are much better prepared for an attack at this time than they were one year ago today. Congressman Kinzinger, is there a feeling among your colleagues that uh, it's safer? Well, I mean, the threat environments less safe. We've got 9,000 threats against uh, members of Congress, including some against me this year. Uh, that's compared to something like uh, three or 400 a, a few years prior. Hmm. Now, the actual Capitol building is more secure, not necessarily because of any massive changes, but because I think part of what was suffered on January 6th was a failure of imagination. When, when all of a sudden you had this breach of the Capitol, the idea of what is our rules of engagement, what can we do, what should we do, that's been clarified now, and that will never happen again. Uh, but I think it's sad that we have to be having a massive police force, and we have to worry about these things. And, you know, in the summer, when I walk around the mall in D.C., watching particularly foreign visitors come and take a picture of the Capitol, because they know this is the representation of free governance, it's sad to see it, you know, have to be secured like it is. You know, many people have said this could never happen again, but, you know, some of the polling we've seen is really concerning with more than 30 percent of Americans saying that violence against the government is justified. Kind of give us your perspective on how just how serious we need to be taking the threat of American extremists. We need to be taking it very seriously. So in a country of 350 million, more than 350 million people, just one percent is 3.5 million people that can do big things that can that can change things when you convince people that their voice has been stolen and in self-governance your vote is your only voice that's really where you have the voice is every election if you're convinced that there is some deep state cabal that is robbing your voice from you i think violence is the next logical step maybe not tomorrow maybe not in a year but people can't be un unheard for that long that's why leaders that fail to tell the truth are failing to do their job of leadership. That's part of what that requires. But uh, I am very concerned in the long run. All right, Congressman Adam Kinzinger, we appreciate your perspective and time on this anniversary. Thank you.